Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I promised last week that we would talk about smart goals this week and crafting some success for your Amazon business. So we, last week we'd really talked about staying motivated and staying um, in tune to what your vision and your purpose is for your business. So if you missed that episode, please go back and listen to it. It will be well worth your listen. If you feel like you're crunched for time, then please just listen to it on two times speed. And I'm sorry in advance because I always talk fast. So. I really wanted to, to discuss what it's like to have goals and to have smart goals and what are smart goals and where they actually originated from because I find the history and origin of things very interesting. So before we get there and do that, I want to briefly just ask you, have you subscribed to mommyincome.com? If not, go to mommyincome.com and forward slash subscribe and subscribe, you're just going to get a newsletter once a week. We're not going to bombard you with a bunch of emails and, and try to, you know, really push everything on you. We don't do a ton of promotion, but we do a weekly episode release and give you some interesting information. Every Monday we send you like a newsletter. So we're not going to bother you with everything, but it, you'll get updates on when there's going to be workshops, when there's additional training that's coming out, a new episode and what it's about so that you can figure out if it's right for you. Um, also, you can subscribe here to the YouTube channel if you are on YouTube right now and you're watching YouTube, um, please hit the little bell there. It says subscribe. Then you get updates. That it doesn't require you to watch anything. It just lets you know that, hey, we got some new content for you. So if you're enjoying the content, number one, engage with it. Subscribe and let us know that you're interested. So I would love to have that. Also, if you've listened to the Amazon Files podcast and you enjoy it, leaving us a review is really helpful. It shows other people, hey, this is a relevant topic. That it's current um, that we release episodes every single week and have for many moons. And so um, we're, I mean, over 500 and some episodes, even though on here they're numbered in a, in a weird way. We didn't start numbering them for a time, but over 500 episodes. Been going live and strong for nearly nine years of weekly content. So make sure that you're subscribing and that you're up to date on all of your mommy income, uh, everything. And of course, we're mommy income everywhere on all the social media channels. So make sure that you use your favorite one and follow us there as well. Uh, we have different content on different platforms. So that's just my shameless plug to be like, hey, if you really like it here, um, stay connected because I'd love to stay connected with you and um, just chat with you about these things. So let's get really into our smart goals. First of all, goals provide the motivational energy you know the stuff we were talking about last week motivation you know part of that was goals and now we're going to talk about how we do goals um but it, goals provide us this motivational energy to to carry on even when we're feeling meh even when we're feeling like so so um and the studies have shown tons of, of decades decades even a century over a century now i think um a couple centuries people have been studying these things i mean Time just gets away, but the most well-known goal setting technique is the SMART technique. It is an acronym and it has several different meanings, but um, it, ca it came, it encouraged us to make specific goals, right? SMART, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, achievable, or attainable. Um, th these, these things have changed over time, but there's like a specific method, realistic and time bound. So as far back as the 19th century, it's American philosopher Hubbard, that's his name, Albert, Albert, something like that, Hubbard, realize that many people fail on a regular basis, even if they have some motivation and different things. And they failed not because they weren't intelligent enough or they didn't have the courage, but because they didn't really organize their energies around a specific task or a specific goal. And what they really just needed was a way to organize their energy and their efforts to improve their chances of success. And it didn't matter with this study, it didn't matter what they were trying to achieve. It wasn't really till the late century, 20th century, that a guy named Duran, George Duran, which is just average corporate planning guy in the late, in the early 1980s, I believe and the SMART goals were officially published in 1981 by this power plant, uh, power company um, corporate director. And he was trying to get people to understand what goals were, how to make them and how to follow these objectives in a team. And so his original criteria for SMART goals were specific, measurable, assignable, which assigned to somebody or somebody specific was going to have to do the job, realistic and time related or time bound, meaning it had to have 
um, a specific time when it was achieve achievable. And so over time, this has changed. The acronym has changed since this was actually first written and kind of put it out there. But the idea is to focus your energies to increase your chances of success. So specific, um, a targeted area. Um, so in, in Doran's original definition, it said that specific was target a specific area for improvement. A specific area of improvement. That's awesome. That could be like, I want to clean my room and I'm going to target a specific area of improvement, AKA the laundry all over the floor. <laughs> That's very specific, measurable to quantify it or at least suggest an indicator of progress. I know some of these words are very corporate -y sometimes, but an indicator of process of progress, meaning something you can measure to say, hey, I'm moving in the right direction, something specific and measurable. Um, now, assignable, we're going to use a different approach for that, but I'm just giving you Doran's um, original uh, meaning for what his SMART goals were. Um, spe specify who will do it, assignable. So are you going to do it and who's going to do it? To where obtain, uh, attainable was uh, more adapted in, in recent years and different people have adapted this, this acronym over time. Um, for, for our terms and purposes today, we're going to do attainable or achievable. Because sometimes people set goals like, I want to fly around the universe, not in a plane like, like Superman. That's not obtainable, at least not in 21st century America. So we'll see. I mean, you can go to the moon now, apparently. But, um, you know, attainable. Attainable for within your business. So realistic, R. The R is for realistic. States what result can you realistically expect given available resources? time, money, energy, knowledge. All of those are your available resources. And then time related, specify when the result can be achieved. What is the deadline? What is the end? Because then we know we have all of these ways to say, hey, look, I either got there or I didn't. And here's the who, what, when, where of following that, okay? Statistics have already shown for years from the business school of Harvard all the way to a regular, you know, University of Phoenix. This has been studied and studied and then studied some more. 30% more likely to achieve a goal if it's written down and specific. 30% more. So just by picking up a pen and paper or your digital whatever, if you just write down what you want, I want to list this many things on Amazon or I want to create one bundle a month for an entire year you're statistically 30% more likely to hit that goal if you just write that on a piece of paper. So y'all, write this second. The first goal that comes to your mind, I don't care if it's crazy. I don't care if it's so out there. Right now, just write it down. Because literally, it just tells you. Like, we're going to take a brief pause. I'm going to write a goal of mine down here on this piece of paper. And you don't have to share it. I'm going to write a goal down on this piece of paper. Because I'm 30% more likely to achieve it if I write it down. So I'm about to write it down right now. Boom, done. Did you guys do it? Do it, write it down right now. Okay, so what are these SMART goals? What are they specifically? We're gonna get them down to it and then I'm gonna give you some examples that you can use for your Amazon business. It doesn't have to be these goals, but, but crafting them in this way really will help you. This is all just for you, this is all to help you. I'm gonna do this as well. I've actually done this many times, but we need a renewal of it because our goals can change. Our ideas, our things can change or if you really just have no idea, you don't really have any goals, then maybe that's why you're lacking some motivation. What are you moving towards if you don't really know? You wanted to start an Amazon business because, go back to last week and listen to the motivation thing because I think it will really help you, first of all, find that vision and that purpose that you maybe have lost along the way. Or maybe that's changed for you and you haven't really took a long look at it yet. Take a 15 minute hustle and just review that. Your goal specific. So we're going to start with the S. S stands for specific. Your goal should be clear and precise and unambiguous. Instead of I want more sales or I want to make more money, use I would like to increase sales by X in the next quarter. I would like to increase my sales by 10% in the next quarter. 
That's very specific. Maybe it's a specific product. I want to sell 15 bundles by the end of the month. What specifically do you want to achieve? Now, remember last week we talked about short-term and long-term goals and talked about how to order and prioritize some of those things based on what's burning in the house, right? So go back and listen again to that episode. But if you didn't, then start thinking about this. What specifically do you want to achieve and narrow it down to a specific metric or point of data, something you can measure, which is the M of SMART goals. So if your goal is to increase sales by 10%, how are you going to measure that? How do you know if you've increased your sales, if you don't have the sales from now and the sales where you'd like to be? So where would you like to be? And then what needs to change to get there? So what will you measure? So your goal needs to be measurable. Determine how you will track and measure said progress. Number one would be an anchor point, right? If you wanted to increase your sales by 10%, you need to know what your sales are right now. And so then adding 10% is where you want to be. So if you aim to sell 500 units of products of a specific product each month, then that's measurable. You know how many units you'd like to sell. That's another way of breaking down your 10%. You could get real detailed here if you want to be real measurable, right? Your specific goal is I want to increase my sales by 10%. Well, how? How are we going to do that? Well, first of all, you need to know what's bringing in the sales and which buttons to push in order to increase those sales. It's part of your how. But tracking it, tracking your progress, you're going to do something different to achieve something different making sure that your goal is set and that it's achievable. So that's another thing too. Three, achievable, A, S, M, A. Specific, measurable, and achievable. Set goals that are realistic based on your resources and current circumstances. Yeah. Is it achievable? Well, that also bases on your time period. If you say, I want to lose 50 pounds in 30 days, it's very unsafe and achievable, maybe, but not safely, depending on what your goal is. If your goal isn't about safety, then your whole entire health could be at risk and you could possibly attain that if you absolutely do everything you can. But what's realistic given the circumstances and resources? If you put 14 things on your to-do list and each of them take one hour, Do you realize you'll have to work a 14 hour day in order to get that done? Is that realistic given the circumstances of your life? That's just your daily to-do list. So it's something to really consider. Using the resources available to you, is it achievable? If you typically sell 200 units a month of something, aiming for 500 might be a real stretch. But aiming for 300 is a lot more achievable. I'm not asking you to bring your goals down. I'm asking you to be what's more realistic in achieving. Analyze your current resources. What are your current resources? Your current resources of time, money, energy, knowledge, all the things. Can you realistically achieve that goal? What are the realistic expectations? Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic is the R of SMART. Realistic. If you're setting goals that are way too big or way too much or way too fast, You're setting yourself up for failure and disaster and disappointment. Your goals need to be realistic. What can realistically be achieved given available resources? If you want to grow by 50%, but you can't put in 50% more effort, you might need to reevaluate your goal. Now, 50% by the end of 2024 might be realistic because you're spacing that out over 12 to 14 months. 
So incrementally, what can you give and expect to receive in that time period that's more reasonable? But if you're saying, I want to grow 50% by the end of the month, good luck with that. The goal should align with your broader objective. What is your broader objective? What is your big goal? To build a brand in order to make it sellable to sell the brand? Is it to build a business to get yourself out of the nine to five and have a sustainable income? Is it to build a brand and then merge with other brands? To expand outside of Amazon into other marketplaces? What is your goal? You have to revisit that mission and that vision statement, that vision that you have for your business and your company, your purpose. What do you want to achieve? Even if it's, I want to make a million dollars. Okay. Okay. I mean, that is specific. In what time frame? In your lifetime? This year? Where are you starting from? These are all very realistic expectations as long as you put the T on the end of SMART. Time bound. Set a deadline to keep you on track. A deadline that's realistic to an achievable, measurable, specific goal, right? So all of these things work together. Your timeline needs to be specific and realistic and achievable. Set yourself up for success. First of all, writing this stuff down already makes you 30% more successful than other people. The statistics have actually proven this. There's been case study upon case study. The Har I believe it's Harvard School of Business. I read this entire article and they did this and they followed these students who were just asked to write, jot down a goal that they had on a piece of paper. And they asked them like years later, many, many, I think at least a decade later, they followed up and asked about those. I mean, this, there's been studies on this stuff for centuries. So let's just give it a try. First of all, the benefits of setting these SMART goals creates clarity and focus and actionable steps that you can take. Because the next answer that you can ask yourself once you set that first goal is how. This is my specific goal. I want to, okay. So what I want to do is outsource all of my eBay business. That's a goal that I have. I love one part of eBay and or one part of thrifting and or flipping. And I rarely have a knack for it, but I don't have time to do all the things. And I love to do multiple things, but I can't do all the things all the time. So my smart goal for my eBay store is to specifically reach a certain level of listings in order to then outsource that. So uh, there's a VA that I know of that has openings for running eBay stores and cross posting and, you know, things like that. And in order to hire her, I have to do 100 listings per month. That is her minimum requirement for her pay. That's 25 listings a week. But I don't have to do all of them. All I have to do is take the pictures and fill out one small chart and take a picture of that. And then she does all of the rest of the things except for the shipping. Now I've actually even found a way with eBliss to consider um, outsourcing even the shipping where it's like Amazon FBA, you put everything all into one box, you ship it off to them. And when your orders come in from eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Mercari, places like that, they fulfill your orders for you. They remove your listings if you've cross posted and it is like Amazon FBA for eBay. It's awesome. It sounds like a very amazing thing, but I'm so far from that as I'm doing everything in the process right now. So the SMART goal is to get there, to be able to specifically say, I want to outsource this and here's step one and here's step two. What is a realistic timeline for this? Am I gonna start creating, when I'm going, I'm doing like zero listings to then 25 listings a week, what's realistic? Is that realistic in that time frame? Can I do that? Can I do that without help? So I'm going to start smaller and I'm going to say, instead of trying to do a hundred listings per month, I'm going to start with 50 or 40, 10 per week. 
I haven't obviously drawn all of this stuff out yet, so I'm doing it live as we're talking about it now. But the whole idea there is to have it be measurable. How many am I going to do per week in order to reach the goal of, say, my first goal, my short-term goal is 40? Is this realistic? Is this, ex is this bigger? Because if I overwhelm myself in the beginning too soon, I'm not going to make it there. No matter what goal that you're setting, putting these parameters on it will just help you move in the right direction. I mean, the studies go all the way back to the 19th century to talk about these things that setting these goals just improve your chances of success. So if you say, hey, I just started bundling and I really wanna succeed at bundling, then what is it that you want to accomplish and how will you, how specific will be about that? How are you going to measure it? So we just launched, um, we're in the middle of um, our very first bundle challenge for students. And the whole idea, the whole goal of the bundle challenge was to launch a bundle in 40 days. That is very specific, that's measurable, has a timeline, it's realistic, and it's obtainable, it's attainable, it's achievable. It's specific, launch a bundle in 40 days. That's exactly what it is. So that's something, and then you figure out the how. The how was, well, we're launching a bundle in 40 days and we're using a specific workbook that I designed that gives you homework and steps every single day. What did we do? We broke down that goal into measurable, actionable steps. So what can I do today in order to accomplish, we have 40 days. That's not, that time is ticking. Is that re realistic? Yes. Realistic, why? Because I've done it over and over and over again. So I know it's realistic. It's realistic because my students have done it. I've had a, somebody launch a bundle in a week. If you can do it from retail arbitrage and have everything in hand, you can launch a bundle in a week. That doesn't, you know, factor in lead time. But if you're factoring lead time, then that's through 40 days. If you already have some of the pieces in place. If you're starting from scratch brand new, you might need a little longer than 40 days. So is that achievable or attainable to you? Maybe not, but maybe 60 days is more achievable for you. So I'm going to encourage you. There's not a lot more to the SMART goals other than you're targeting a specific area of improvement. That's specific. You're going to quantify and measure it, indicating progress. You're going to make sure that it's attainable and realistic. And you're going to put a timestamp on it, a realistic timestamp on it, based on your resources and your goals. So here's some common mistakes too. Mistakes that happen with SMART goals. Setting too many goals at once. Start small. Y'all, start small. Too many goals at once. Reach one goal at a time. So if you're just all about all the goals and you want to sum up, okay, one business goal, one personal goal, one relationship goal, something. What is your goal? What are you aiming at? What are you aiming towards? What's one thing that you want to improve? Too many goals at once leads to overwhelm. Not all of the fires are burning at the same time. And if they are, you need to figure out which one is the priority and set a goal for that. Maybe it's dead inventory and you have a hard time letting go. So you say, you know what? I'm going to get rid of one of my ASINs, my lowest performing ASIN by the end of the week. You can literally sell weekly goals or daily goals. By the end of the day, I'm going to do one thing that's hard for me. Whatever it is. Specific, measurable. You can set these goals as small and as big as you want. Daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. And also another mistake people make about this is that they don't adjust to their goals over time. Things change, things change. Maybe your health has changed. Maybe your financial status has changed a little bit. Maybe you don't need as much. Maybe you need a little bit more. What is your current goal for right now? Goals change over time, revisit them. Again, everyone feels like this is overwhelming. It doesn't have to be. Take a 15-minute hustle, set a 15-minute timer, 
and just say, what are my goals in life right now? What do I really want? What am I working towards? And if you have no idea, then write, I have no idea. But then be honest with yourself about not having any idea. And then ask yourself the real question, what do I want? What am I here for? What am I doing? If you want better, do better. Learn how to do something different. Set the goal to get out then, if that's your goal. And finally, the worst mistake, confusing movement with progress, confusing activity with achievement. Prime example, a rocking chair. You're moving, but you ain't going nowhere, right? Are you in a rocking chair, moving, going through the motions, but not really moving forward? Not really moving in a direction, just kind of back and forth moving. Hmm? Don't confuse activity with achievement. What are you working towards? Because if your goal is to walk a mile and you're sitting in a rocking chair moving, you still ain't walking a mile. You need to get up and step. So that's your challenge. Your challenge is to set a smart goal for yourself. How about for Q4? I mean, we're upon Q4 right here and now. What is your goal for Q4? Is it realistic? Is it obtainable? Do you have the resources, time, energy, money, motivation to reach that goal? If not, it's okay to lower the goal. You still want to achieve a goal. You're still working towards something. So don't just throw goals out because you don't have some big ones. How about just a small one? One goal at a time. A weekly goal. One. And then it's okay. We can celebrate that. Pat yourself on the back for it. So important to review your goals regularly and adjust them. And be persistent. Even if your goal isn't met yet, it's an opportunity to learn. If you didn't reach a goal that you set for yourself, it's time to look at why. It was probably one of those things. S-M-A-R-T. Was it time bound or did you just say, oh, this year I want to get healthy? What does that mean? Or maybe it was, I want to lose 50 pounds in six months. Is that realistic? Maybe. I want to make a million dollars and sell my business. But I only made 10 bucks yesterday. Hmm. Is it obtainable in the time period? Ask yourself these questions. It's not for shame or guilt or to beat yourself up or to be so disappointed. It's to learn from it and do better. If you're having trouble with some of these goals or you don't know what to do or you don't even know, you say, okay, I have these goals, but I don't know how to achieve them. Mommyincome.com forward slash coaching. I can help you with your goals to see if they're realistic, to see what you need to work on next. Sometimes you just need an extra pair of eyes and ears to see what's realistic in your business and what you want and what you want to do and what you want to move forward with. And if you want to pivot or change, if you need to or should, because I'll be flat out honest with you. I have nothing to lose and nothing to hide and nothing to gain by just telling you the truth. It will help you most than anything else. It's all helping you. So go ahead and set your SMART goal and then see if you don't achieve it. Even if you just wrote it down, maybe did nothing else. You say you're still 30% more likely to achieve that goal than the next person sitting next to you that has a goal kind of swimming around in their head, but they don't actually write it down. So even that one step of writing it down saying, I want this, then just add a timeline to it and then see how reasonable it is to achieve that. It would be super hard. It might also be super easy. But you never know until you put it into action. So that's your challenge for today. Write a SMART goal for yourself. Even if it's, hey, remember last week when we talked about taking that lunch break? Maybe it's saying, that's what I did. That was one of my SMART goals at the beginning of this year. I will take a lunch break every day. I have not been perfect at it, but I am consistent in and now is a regular habit for me to take a lunch and get out of my office and have a lunch for myself. So if I can just make a SMART goal about lunch, y'all can make a SMART goal about your business about transitioning or about doing something different or more or extra or maybe adding a bundle or maybe taking away a bundle or maybe adding some wholesale or maybe adding another marketplace saying I want to learn Walmart maybe that's it what is it share it with me I'd love to hear it I'd love to hear that you're setting smart goals and this is actually 
working for you because I already know by all the studies and statistics, you're going to be 30% more likely to be successful when you put that into writing. So write it down. Y'all, I hope you've learned some valuable things revisiting SMART goals. I'm sure most of you have heard this already before, but it's worth listening to again. It's worth being like, oh yeah, I've set some goals before, but not all of them have that criteria. Some of them are very unrealistic, which then I'm setting myself up for failure, which then that's what everybody expects of me, right? The negative train starts to drive. So sometimes we got to be on the side of Nike here and just do it. Don't feel it all the time. We don't always feel it all the time. Feelings are fickle. Feelings come and go. Feelings are um, unpredictable and can't be trusted, but we can trust facts. We can trust solid facts and data and we can trust the fact that we will still be moving so trust the statistics trust the data trust this method because it's been proven now for many decades many many decades so try the smart goals and i'll see you guys same time same place next week on the amazon files